I've always been very moved by and the movements of the mouth and the shape of the mouth and the teeth and I like the you may say the glitter and colour that comes from the mouth and I've always hoped in a sense to be able to paint the mouth like Monet painted uh, uh, a sunset but I've never succeeded in doing it. In 1953, Francis Bacon created a series of screaming popes. This painting is supposedly believed to be inspired by Velasquez's portrait of Pope Innocent X. But Bacon's distorted and screaming version of Pope obviously caught more attention than ever. Francis Bacon was born in 1909 in an Irish rabbit protestant family. He had a difficult dynamics with his father since childhood. His father was a veteran and a racehorse trainer. He was always angered by Bacon's effeminate gestures and dressing. A story emerged that once Bacon was caught by his father wearing his mother's underwear he was whipped by his father's stable boys. In turn, Bacon developed sexual relations with the stable boys, the first of many incidents exhibiting his masochistic behavior. He once told in an interview, my father and mother disgusted me and offered me to one of his friends. It was only his nanny, Jessie Lightfoot, who became his closest companion and remained close to him until her death in 1952. In 1928, when Bacon travelled to Paris, he instantly fell in love with the Parisian art. Next few years, he painted, but sporadically, often destroying his own paintings. Three studies for figures at the base of crucifixion was his first sensational artwork that was showcased in Lefebvre Gallery, London in April 1945. The triptych illustrated distorted ostrich necks, looking like phallic necks. Herbert Frustin, art critic recalled, I, I must confess, was so shocked and disturbed by the surrealism of Francis Bacon that I was glad to escape from this exhibition. Perhaps it was the red background that made me think of entrails, of anatomy or vivisection and feels squeamish. The triptych caused a sensation and overnight turned Bacon into the most controversial painter in the country. Version 2 of Lying Figure with Hypodermic Syringe became another controversial painting that he created in 1966. It depicts Henrietta Moraes, one of his close friends, with her arm pierced by a hypodermic syringe. This image obviously created a rift between Moraes and Bacon and gave rise to a lot many questions on Moraes' consumption of drugs. In defense, Bacon commented, I have used the figures lying on beds with a hypodermic syringe as a form of nailing the image more strongly to reality or appearance. I don't put the syringe because of the drug that's been injected, but because it's less stupid than getting a nail through the arm, which would be even more melodramatic. Bacon's first major love was Peter Lacey, a former fighter pilot in the Battle of Britain. Bacon and Lacey developed a tempestuous relationship until Lacey's death in 1962. Lacey was a violent man who used to beat Bacon in drunken rages, once even throwing him out of a window after a dispute. His face was so damaged that his right eye had to swing back in place, said Dr. Richardson in New York Review. Bacon happily became a slave to his neurotic sadism and went out of his way to stay close to him. When Lacey moved to Morocco, Bacon soon followed. Bacon supported his relationship stating, Even I don't like violence, but I have submitted to it. The painting portrait was created in 1962. 
Despite its anonymous title, it is undoubtedly a portrait of Peter Lacey. In late 1963, Bacon met George Dyer, resulting in another stormy and tragic relation. When Bacon was not sexually satisfied, he broke up with Dyer. Two days before the opening of the Francis Bacon retrospective at the Grand Palais in Paris in 1971, Dyer was found dead from a drink and drugs overdose in the bathroom of one of the hotels in Paris. Triptych is a visual translation of Dyer's death scene. The left frame showed Dyer seated on the toilet with his head crouched between his knees. The central panel shows Dyer sitting on a toilet bowl in a more contemplative pose, his head and upper body writhing beneath a hanging light bulb which throws a large bat-like shadow formed in the shape of a demon. And in the right panel, Dyer is showing with his eyes shut, vomiting into a hand basin. The white arrow pointing to a man who is about to die. John Edwards came to his life from the mid-70s. This was Bacon's most stable relation until Bacon's death. And so he portrayed Edward gently, involving no violence or brutality. His last relationship was with a relatively young man, Jose Copello, who actually used Bacon as a golden goose. Bacon gave two of his paintings and four million dollars to him, something Bacon confided he regretted doing before his death in 1992. Even after 25 years of his death, Bacon's canvases regularly exceed 40 million pounds at auction. Each painting on the canvas translates a horrible real-life incident. It's true that he portrayed himself as a roaring boy, lord of misrule and conveyor of artistic violence, but that is only part of the truth. He built this facade intentionally, hiding the complex narrative behind the sadistic men in his life. Which one is your favorite painting by Francis Bacon? Let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, please consider donating to me on patreon.com forward slash frame of reference and my sincere thanks to all my active patrons. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos from our channel.